As I get older, I find myself having favorites. A favorite thing for everything. A thing that is the best thing for the thing that it does. A favorite brand of soy milk, home soy, and sweeten. Everything else tastes like garbage. Marks and Spencer, boxer briefs, black and blue, pack of four. Mad Rock drones, size 12. They don't have to be broken in and the heel hook feels good, so why bother trying out a different shoe only to find out they're not as good. Pilot's High Tech C, 0.4 millimeters. This one's about four years old. When they break, I just buy more. More of the same. A favorite thing for everything. That somehow with drawing tools, I hold out a hope. A small chance that maybe, just maybe, this is the new one. A new favorite that will finally dethrone my old favorite. Oh God, sorry. Let me just, let me just turn this, turn this off. So recently I got this uh, gift from a friend who went to Japan and he brought me back this uh, pen that honestly, it's cool. This is the Kaki Mori dip pen and it's really famous because it looks really cool. It looks real, like some sort of torture device and unlike any other nib I've ever seen, um, you, you know what a regular nib looks like and you know that this does not look anything like that. So I'm really curious as to how it writes. I've never tried this before. Um, there's also, this is a nice bottle of ink in here. So that's, that's, that's nice. So I'm gonna do some drawing with this, of course, um, and I'm gonna show you how it works and what I think about it. But that's just the first impressions and we're not just gonna stop there. That's sort of my gripe with a lot of pen reviews is that it just usually stops at the initial impressions. The thing about a drawing tool is that it takes time to get used to it and understand how to use it to its fullest potential. So, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you a first impression and then I'm going to just keep drawing with it every day and use it regularly for uh, let's say two weeks and then I'm going to get back to you and then tell you what I feel about this pen, how to use it and you know how to get the best out of it and, and whether it's worth buying. So let's let's do that. So I'm not really sure if this nib is flexible at all, just because, you know, it doesn't really seem like it wants to flex. This nib is made out of stainless steel. I think they have a brass version, but um, I have the stainless steel one, which is totally cool. Let's see. Oh my God. Okay, so this nib is really, really wet and super thick. Let me see if I can just get more ink. It writes really well, it's really smooth. It's really thick. Let me see what kind of line variation I can get. So what happens if I press down really hard on it? Uh, it doesn't do anything, it's really stiff. So I guess going quicker will give you a thinner line and then going slower would naturally give you a thicker line just because a lot more of the ink is getting sucked into the paper fibers. So what I've noticed is that this nib does hold a lot of ink. Um, even though I've drawn so much and there's quite a lot of ink on the paper already, it still looks really coated and wet with ink. So let's just, and I think the inside, there's like plenty more in there. So let's just keep going and see how long one dip takes us. So again, um, maybe, maybe doing this would give us more line variation. So great. Okay, so um, with pens like this, I guess, I think, have, oh, there we go. That's not any more ink. So going on the side here and using the geometry of the nib gives me thicker lines but it's also not very consistent when it comes to how much ink comes out. <laughs> so you can't, okay. All right, all right, hold on. This is, this is cool. With drawing tools, I just constantly find myself in this need to buy new shit and just try out all this different stuff in order to I don't know, feel something. But at the same time, I just want a favorite pen. Like that one pen that I just default to and I reach for whenever I just want to draw something. And I'm struggling to find a happy medium. So that's my first impression of the Kaki Mori nib. I'm just gonna clean this up ASAP because I think once it dries, it's gonna be really hard to get inside these tines to, to clean. So I'm just gonna give it a real quick wash. It's day two and I thought I'd be a little bit more methodical with my approach this time. So what I want to do is make a comparison between how the Kaki Mori nib draws compared to the Stain of Blue Pumpkin and the Zebra G nib, both of which I am more familiar with. 
The first two nibs I'm testing are the Staino Blue Pumpkin and the Zebra G nib, both of which I'm very familiar with. The first thing I want to see is how much ink they can hold with a single dip. Then some S-curves to demonstrate the flexibility of the nibs and just a quick little mech to show what that would look like in practice. Wouldn't it be nice to just like one thing and then feel no desire to seek out the next new thing? Like, can you imagine the amount of guilt and anxiety that would take away? So the Zebra G nib is slightly thinner than the Staino. It also holds less ink, but of course it's a serviceable, reliable nib. Plenty of people use it for everything from manga to illustrations and ink drawings and, and all that. It's slightly stiffer so you do have to push down harder to get a thick line. It's so weird because when I'm drawing, I'm in this meditative mode and I'm perfectly happy with the pen that I'm using. But the moment I stop, it's like that thought comes back in. It's like, hey, you need to buy a new pen. And I'm caught in this samsaran hamster wheel. And I can't be the only one, can I? So next up is the Kakimori and clearly it holds so much more ink. My god, just look, it just, it keeps going. There's no line variability because it's not flexible. So these S-curves just go on forever and ever. And then here's a little mech drawing at the bottom. Um, it's out of frame, I'm sorry you can't see it so well right now, but it looks different, right? Like the line is thicker, it's different. You, it, it's different, right? You can tell. It is day four of drawing with the Kaki Mori pen nib. And up until now, I've been drawing with just the ink that came with uh, the, the uh, pen. So today I'm gonna try it out and see how it performs with different types of inks. So what I have here with me is Sumi ink and also uh, Bombay ink. Now, now these two inks are not fountain pen inks. Um, they're designed for specifically dip pens and like calligraphy. Theoretically, they should perform better on this pen than the the, uh, the one that actually comes with it, which is a fountain pen ink, which is a little bit more dilute than these two, which are more viscous. Um, so I'm gonna start with the control, which is the Kakimori ink. So here I am drawing with the Kakimori ink, which is, you know, it's nothing new by now. And at this point, um, I know how it reacts and I know how it feels. And so this is pretty familiar to me. So the next one I'm going to try is uh, this Bombay ink by Dr. P.H. Martin. It's an India ink, so it's pigmented and it should be more viscous than the fountain pen ink. Um, now, two things that I really want to pay attention to when it comes to differentiating ink is um, how much ink gets absorbed into the paper from the nib and like to show you how much um, sort of like feathering or blooming you see once the ink makes contact with the paper and also uh, consequently how much ink the nib holds uh, with a single dip. It's not super different. I will say though that I'm having an easier time getting uh, finer lines just because again the ink is slightly more viscous so it holds its shape and it doesn't just like you know fall apart when it touches the paper. Um, like this one here. So you see a lot of like blooming and a lot of like, I, I wouldn't say feathering, but the ink definitely spreads out and your line will slowly, you can see your line slowly get thicker and thicker. Whereas, you know, with a more viscous ink, it's more likely to hold that shape. And so, you know, I can get a lot of thinner lines. All right, here we go. Oh, I like this. Okay, this, this is amazing. What? What's going on? What's so different? Okay, so first of all, this feels a lot drier. What I mean is that like, you know, it definitely doesn't spread as much as these two inks. And it feels like once I, you know, put the ink down on paper, it just stays there. Um, the flow rate definitely seems to be a lot lower than these two. Now, the sensation of drawing with this ink feels so much like drawing with like a Micron Fine Liner or like a really, really uh, opaque ballpoint pen. It's weird because it doesn't feel like the other two. For some reason, it just feels a lot more reactive and I can definitely get lines that are a lot thinner. You can see these lines here are very, very fine compared to the other two. Um, it sort of stays tight and 
it's sticking to the sides of the nib as opposed to just like flowing through straight away the moment it comes in contact with uh, the paper and it feels a lot more easy to control. Overall, I just think that drawing with a more viscous ink is more forgiving. So in my case, it's the Sumi ink, um, simply because it holds its line shape a lot better. And also you can afford to move your pen a little more slowly across the paper, simply because with thinner inks, it's just gonna run down the nib the moment it comes into contact with the paper. So you're gonna have to move a lot more precisely and a lot more quickly if you wanna get those thin lines. Uh, with a thicker ink, you can just you know, take that beat and have more time to think about your line. Uh, okay, up until now, I've been talking about how I've never ever seen or used a pen like this before. And I remember something about a comment on Patreon about shut, shut up. And you know, how it's a, the Kakimori nib is actually like a glass dip pen. So I've never used a glass dip pen before. I'm gonna get a glass dip pen. Let's go. Back. I didn't have time to test it out yesterday, but here we go. This is the test between the Kakimori pen and the uh, glass dip pen. Let's see how different it is. Uh, all right, let's just draw something uh, real quick. Just Again, to remind myself about what this pen feels like. Uh, let's see. I keep justifying these purchases with BS arguments that I, I know are BS. Like, it's going to revolutionize the way I draw. I'm in an experimental phase. Maybe I will be the guy who draws with a quill and then I won't need to buy anything else after this. Now I'm going to try out the glass dip pen. I've never used a glass dip pen before, so this is exciting. Okay, so right off the bat, it's not as smooth as um, the Kakimori, uh, which is surprising considering it's it's glass, right? Very similar to the Kakimori as far as like thickness is concerned. So here, here's like here's like a sample line, pretty close, right? And what about these thick shapes? Mm, can't really do it, huh? If I go really close to the no, okay. What if I do this? Not really. They are very similar in terms of um, line width, I guess minimum line width, and just what you would draw as the standard line width. Um, having said that, you don't get the line weight modulation that you would get with the Kakimori simply because of the shape of the nib, especially not with my particular glass nib, which is tapered at the end. Um, in a particular way that doesn't allow me to, uh, I guess, like turn my tilt my pen so that I can get a thicker line weight. Maybe some other glass nibs do that, like with the shape of a Kakimori nib. But again, I, I don't really use glass nibs. This is my first time, so I I wouldn't know. I'm not the person to ask. Um, I don't. I definitely don't think it's as smooth as the Kakimori, and and that is a matter of personal preference. If you like more feedback, like a scratchier nib then I guess the glass pen is fine. But if you like something that's really, really smooth and just glides across the uh, paper like, oh, like glass, which is ironic. Well, then I think the Kakimori is definitely superior in that aspect. I am at a bit of an impasse. It's been two weeks and that's the amount of time that I allotted myself to give this pen a proper shake. But there still feels like there's untapped potential in this pen. I don't really have any hard evidence to back me up here, but it's just a gut feeling. And there's something about the way this pen works that just does not quite integrate with my style of drawing. So maybe I'm just gonna give it a couple more days, you know, who knows. I'm just gonna keep drawing and then... I've been drawing with the Kaki Mori for, uh, I don't know how many days it's been. And I keep holding out on ending this test because I thought I would come across some sort of revelation, um, an aha moment where the pen goes from being just a pen and transcends into something that's life-changing. And I would give you this whole spiel about some lesson learned along the way, um, the music would swell, I would end the video with a punchline, cut to black and it would be cinematic. 
but I, I don't have one, and I hope you're okay with that. Instead, I'll give you my honest, unglamorous, uncinematic thoughts on the Kakimori pen nib. I like the looseness of the Kakimori pen nib. It's inherently an impressionistic pen um, just because of its thick line weight. While I know that you can do really thin fine lines with the nib, you have to hold it almost perfectly perpendicular to the paper and who, who does that? It's a very loose, sketchy style which can be fun sometimes. So where does this pen nib fit into my already substantial arsenal of drawing tools? Well, in many ways it's similar to a brush pen and so I treat it as such. Um, the use cases are all very similar. However, I do like to use it when I'm sketching and I want to keep the underdrawing intact and not erase it after putting down my line art. It's a very specific use case, but it's the one where I found that the Kaki Mori is the best at, uh, more so than any of my other art tools. Favorites are reliable. You know what you're gonna get. A favorite food, a favorite color, I know nothing will ever truly dethrone the high tech C as my favorite pen, but I keep trying because novelty is novel. And sometimes that's good enough. Trust in myself to really know.